I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed. Well, when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. Come on, let's sing. We're in a good place tonight. I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed to tell the Messiah when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest. I am blessed. I am blessed. Well, I am blessed. I am blessed. Come on, sing it like you mean it every day that I live, I am blessed. Well, when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, I am blessed, I am blessed. Well, we are blessed. We, <laughs> woo, <laughs> praise God. I believe it, I know it. When I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, we are blessed, we are blessed. See it one more time. Well, I am blessed, I am blessed every day that I live. Woo, I feel God here tonight. Well, when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, I am blessed, I am blessed. Sing it one more time. Well, I am blessed, I am blessed. Sing it, choir, that I live high. <laughs> Woo, glory. <laughs> and I lay my head to rest. I got to sing it just one more time. Let the rafters ring tonight. Well, I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. How many believe you're blessed? My God. I can't help it. I want to shout. Whoo! <laughs> I said I want to shout. I don't have any time to grumble. I don't have anything bad to say because God is good. God is... Whew, I feel that Holy Ghost wind. I said God is good. We are blessed. Sing it one more time. Give me the music. Well, I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live for oh my God. When I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, I, I got to have it just one more time. But we sing it all night long. It's all right with me. Well, I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed. Well, when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. <laughs> now give the Lord a good hand clap, would you? Worship God now. The choir's coming around to sing. Worship God as they come. You're in a good place. We ought to be excited about Jesus. I said we ought to be excited about Jesus. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's everything. Amen. Worship God.
ushers please come we're going to receive our offering the youth will be going out tonight remember tomorrow night is Thursday prayer meeting t tomorrow night had a good crowd last Thursday night prayed and had good prayer God answers prayer when we pray what would you do if you couldn't pray we would be in trouble wouldn't we we can always go to the Lord when man don't want to hear you God's got an open ear if you live right Amen. Heavenly Father, bless this offering. Multiply it tonight. Thank you for the privilege of being in your house again. Bless the remainder of this service and save and heal and deliver. Touch those that are watching the internet. And bless us in that manner and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, I want to say again, thank you for all the gifts that you gave, personal gifts, and how you treated us this past Sunday. We're so grateful to you. We don't feel worthy of it, and we say that not just to be modest. We mean that, but we appreciate you, and uh, you are a blessing to us, and uh, we want to be a blessing to you. It's my desire to be a good pastor, to preach good messages, to love you. And to get you close to God. Shalom akandai. I feel the Holy Ghost around here tonight. I'm telling you, you can serve God. And you can keep the victory. You can live right. God made it possible through His Son, Jesus. Amen. Worship God as adoration comes around to sing tonight. on to the mighty hand that made me a friend to man rescued me and set me free and made me what I should be I know just what it means to shed a joyful tear it's faith that brought me safe this far and taught my heart to fear I'm a holding on and I'm not ashamed to call the mighty name I call his name wherever I go, letting the praises ring. Well, ever since he rescued me from the rain and the storm, I've been walking along right beside me, though he never has left me alone. I'm holding on and I'm not ashamed to call the mighty name. Well, I call his name wherever I go, letting the praises ring. Since he rescued me from the rain and the storm, he's been walking along right beside of me. No, he never has left me alone. Ever since I've been adopted into the holy family, 
I can feel those arms of protection wrapped all around me. Every time I think about it, it makes me happy as I can be. I can feel the Holy Spirit I'm moving around inside of me. I'm a holy zone and I'm not ashamed to call the mighty name. Oh, I call his name wherever I go. Letting the praises ring. Well, every since he rescued me from the rain and the storm, he's been walking along right beside of me. No, he never has left me alone. I'm a holy zone and I'm not ashamed to call the mighty name. Oh, I call his name wherever I go. Letting the praises ring well ever since he rescued me from the rain and the storm. He's been walking along right beside of me. No, he never has left me alone. Well, I'm a feeling mighty fine. Living like a Christian every day. Walking in a life with a heart full of grace. Well, and you may see me crying with a smile upon my face. Oh, yeah. I'm a holding on and I'm not ashamed to call the mighty name. I call his name wherever I go. Letting the praises ring. Well, ever since he rescued me from the rain and the storm, he's been walking along right beside of me. No, he never has left me alone. I'm a holding on man of not shame to call the mighty name. I call his name wherever I go. Letting the praises ring well ever since he rescued me from the rain and the storm. Oh, he's been walking along right beside of me. No, he never has left me alone. Again, well, I'm a feeling mighty fine, living like a Christian every day, walking in the light with a heart full of grace. Well, the Spirit comes upon me anytime, any place, and you may see me crying, but I've got a smile on my face. Well, I'm holding on and I'm not ashamed. To call the mighty name, I call his name wherever I go. Letting the praises ring well ever since he rescued me from the rain and the storm. He's been walking along right beside of me, no, he never has left me alone. I'm holding on and I'm not ashamed to call the mighty name. Ring well ever since he rescued me from the rain and the storm. He's been walking along right beside of me. No, he never has left me alone. He never left me. He never left me. Jesus he never left me. He never left me. He never left me. He never left me. Jesus never left me. He never left me. Oh, when I was lonely. He never left me. Oh, he's been walking along right beside of me. Oh, he never has left me alone. Oh, he's been walking along right beside of me. Oh, he never has left me alone. Oh, he's been walking along right beside of me. Oh, he never has left me Into the holy family, I can feel those arms of protection wrapped all around me. Every time I think about it, it makes me happy as I can be. I can feel the Holy Spirit, He's moving around inside.
inside of me. Oh, I'm holding on and I'm not ashamed to call the mighty name. Oh, I call his name wherever I call. Letting the praises ring well ever since he rescued me from the rain and the storm. Oh, he's been walking along right beside of me, Lord. He's been walking along right beside of me, no one ever has left me alone. He's been walking along right beside of me, no one ever has left me alone. He's been walking along right beside of me, no one ever has left me alone. young people can go at this time. Amen. Everybody stand, if you will, please. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, and verse 4 and 5. Excuse me, 3 and 4. No, 4 and 5. I'm wrong again. Revelation, chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to preach this message unto these precious folks here. I need the anointing of God. Touch my mind and my words and let me speak with authority and power and love. And bless in this altar service. And touch every person that's sick. Brother Hester, God, he texted me, said he was sick, not able to be here. Touch his body and help him tonight and all the people that are sick and all that are watching by internet. Save the lost and heal and deliver. We're trusting you tonight. In Jesus' name, we lean on you for everything that we are. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white. For they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Let me read it one more time. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4 and 5. Thou hast a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. I want to preach tonight a few moments on the subject, walking in white with Christ. Walking in white with Christ, and you can be seated if you will, please. The biggest asset of Jesus and the biggest miracle that he had was when he lived a life without sin. Sometimes I think about heaven and I think about the devil. I think about the devil, he's not going to be in heaven. I think about there'll be no sin there, no uncleanness, nothing unholy. We can't equate with that. 
Because all we've known since we've been in this world is a world of sin and rebellion. And men and women are waxing worse and worse more than they ever have. Sin is rampant. The devil's loose. Hell has been unleashed on society. Terrible things are happening. But God sent Jesus. And in the midst of the world where he lived, sin was there then. The devil was there. He's been here ever since Adam and Eve sinned. Ever since they broke the laws of God and a curse was pronounced upon this earth. The devil's been around. But I've got good news. He's not going to always be around. He's not going to always be talking to you and worrying you. Maybe you're trying to get some peace and he's parking on your shoulder and he's trying to worry you and talk to you and aggravate you. He won't be using some unclean spirit that somebody's possessed with against you, a person coming against you. He's going to be dealt with, but it took Jesus to do it. And Jesus, while he was on this earth, he walked in spotless white. And those who are with him, those who are his, that belong to him, everyone that's converted, Christ today wants to clothe us in a white garment. These are powerful scriptures here that I've read to you in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 4 and 5. The Lord of heaven is talking about the church of Sardis here. Jesus is doing the talking. And he's telling the church of Sardis they hadn't defiled their garments, a few of them, and they shall walk with me in white. Why? Because they have not defiled their garments. Well, to walk in white in the future, you've got to walk in white now. If you're going to see heaven, you've got to have heaven now. That is, the Spirit of the Lord must be in your life. You must live a worthy life walking in white with the Lord Jesus Christ. He talks about the overcomer in verse 5 of Revelation chapter 3. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Now you've got some people say once you're saved, you're always saved. You're going to heaven regardless. The blood cleanses you and makes no difference what you do, but you've got to walk in white. You've got to be pure. You've got to be holy. You can't do that on your own. It takes God. I said it takes God. You know good and well, and I know good and well, as I'm speaking to you tonight, that there will be a devil as soon as you get out of this service. He's going to jump on you. He's going to talk to you. But Jesus has power over the devil. But he said he would not blot their name out of the book of life. That means you can have your name in. You can be saved and it can still be blotted out. And he said, but he will confess his name before his father and before the angels. But who is it for? It's for the overcomer. I believe you'll make it to heaven. I believe you'll live a worthy life where God can pour out his power without measure upon you and you can have the joy that is unspeakable and full of glory if you are an overcomer. That's why prayer is necessary. That's why going to the house of God often is necessary. Worship is necessary. Singing unto the Lord and praising his great and mighty name is necessary. All the things that God tells us to do, we must do because it is necessary for us to be overcomers. Nobody's going to sneak into heaven. Nobody's going to get in that doesn't have a white garment washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 3 and verses 14 through 20, the scripture said, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. God knows you. You can't fool him. You may fool people, but you won't fool people long. They'll find out what you are. You just be around a person a little while, and how they talk and the language that comes out of their mouth will reveal what they are, because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. He says, I know your works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, and I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. 
He said, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, and white raiment, he said, that thou mayest be rich. He said, Tried as gold in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness doth not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thy salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I will open the door and come into him and sup with him. And he with me. But notice what he said in verse 18. Very powerful here. In Revelation chapter 3, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. Why? That thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. He didn't talk about just any kind of raiment. He talked about white raiment because white is important to God. It represents the purity of God. You'll never have power with God till you walk in white with Jesus. When you're holy, when you're pure, your mind is clean. Your tongue is clean. Your eyes are clean. Your walk is clean. Everything about you is clean. Then you can expect God Almighty to come to your aid and he will pour you out a blessing that you won't be able to receive because you're walking with him in Christ or in white, excuse me. He said in Revelation 16 and verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and I see his shame. He said, lest he walk naked. God wants you to have on that white garment. Everything about God is wrapped around holiness. This world was holy when God made it. When God saves you and sanctifies you and baptizes you in the Holy Ghost and fire, he made you holy. You can't be like this world. You can't live like this world. You can't do the things they do. It's because you're different. You're holy. You got on a white garment. He said in Ephesians 5 and 25 through 27, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it unto himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The church that Jesus bought is a holy church, walking in white. That's top priority. More than anything in the church, everybody must walk in white. Nobody is excused. Nobody's exempt. Sometimes people try to make excuses for their failures and what they do, and sometimes you get by with it. But in God's kingdom, you're inexcusable because God has a method and God has a plan and God has the ability to give you a robe that is white where you can walk in white with God. The prodigal had gone away from his father and had wasted his substance with riotous living told his daddy, I want to leave home. I want to get out of here. I want to see what the world's like. Give me my living, the goods that I'm supposed to have. According to the law, he had to do that. Certain amount of goods he left and he spent all the money he had with riotous living, with harlots and so forth. And he did wrong. And he was there a while and his money ran out and he began to be in want. He joined himself to a citizen of that country. He sent him into the fields to feed the hogs. That's all he could do. That was as low as he had got. But now he doesn't have anything. He decides he's going back to the father. I'll just tell the father I'm in bad shape. Your servants that you have are a lot better than I am. Just make me a servant. I'm not be worthy to call, be called your son. He made his way back to the father. And the father saw him coming and had compassion and ran and kissed him and held him. And the Bible said that he took him and put a garment on him. And he put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and said, kill the fatted calf. We're going to rejoice. And we're going to have a time. But listen, they could not have any rejoicing. They could not eat the fatted calf. 
they could not have anything that was joyous and jubilant at that day until the prodigal had a change in appearance. He didn't look like this uh, man's son when he came back. He left in good apparel. He left in good favor. He left with a higher echelons of living. And he's coming back looking like a slave. I want to tell you, we're not slaves. We're sons of God. We're children of the king. He's clothed us. He set us down at his table. We're feasting right now in this church at the house of God. We're worshiping God. We're feeling his power and his anointing. He is upon us because we have a garment of white upon us. He didn't put that garment on him just to be putting it on him. He wanted his son to change his appearance, change his life. He's been living a wretched, sinful life, but now he's come back home and the father says, I'll have none of that. You're not going to look like that. You're not going to live like that. Aren't you glad that when Jesus got a hold of you, the father said, I'll have none of that. You're mine. I bought you with my blood and you've come before me. You've come wanting compassion. I'm falling on you with compassion. I'm kissing you. I'm taking you in my arms and I'm going to change the way you live. There's a lot of people want to come to God and they want to get saved, but they don't want to change your way of living. I'm telling you, when you get a hold of God, he'll give you a blood bath. He'll wash you in his blood. He'll clean you up. He'll put a robe on you to hide your nakedness. It'll be a white robe and your name will be written down in heaven. You'll be an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ and you will be ready when the trumpet sounds. That prodigal got that favor of that father. The word says, Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. Oh, how we need to think upon him. I said how we need to think upon him. He's far greater than our minds can comprehend. He's more good than we can ever understand. He's wonderful. He's so high and mighty and lifted up. The heavens is his throne and the earth is his footstool and he bowed down and humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross so could he could go to his wardrobe and pick out a white robe and take that garment, that filthy garment that's sold by the flesh and by sin and the devil and change you and put on a robe of white, a robe of righteousness upon you. To walk in right with Christ means something. Walking with Christ. Living for him. Not when you just come to church. Not when you're just in the presence of good, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled people. But when you're all surrounded by the devil. He goes into the prisons. He's got a prison ministry. does a good job. He's surrounded by mean, evil people. But he goes in there with a white robe. He goes in there with a holy message. He goes there with a change in message. I'm telling you, you're sitting here tonight, you precious saints of God that love God. You're sitting here because you heard a transforming message. It transformed your life. It brought you out. God reached back and put a robe on you. And you need to be happy about it. You need to rejoice of what you were. But thank God what you are, what you are now. Nobody can do it for you. It took Jesus. Jesus took his sacrifice on that cross but walking in white with Christ oh I like that with Christ not without him he doesn't save you and give you a white robe and going to put a crown on you and make you what he is and leave you by yourself you're walking with him <laughs> everywhere you go Jesus is with you I had a tough day today. Got up real early and went to Spartanburg and I used my GPS and I was in a fix. That thing wasn't doing right or I was hitting the wrong buttons one. I wanted to go to Spartanburg Regional Hospital and I typed it in. And I, they led me off the road, you know, off of Interstate 40, uh, Interstate 40, Interstate 85. I told you I was confused. <laughs> And I should have went on to Spartanburg, but he said, get off at exit 80. And I was going all through the country. I was going through 35 mile an hour for about 10 miles and 
trees are everywhere and I'm wondering, look where I'm at. Well, they're taking me in the back way. Well, I got over there and it led me to hospital, all right. It led me to hospital street. I was about 10 miles away from Spartanburg. I had to call Brother Lockler and he had to come and take me into the hospital. You say, well, you're dumb. Well, if you think I'm dumb, it's all right. But the thing just didn't work today, and I don't know why. I must have hit the wrong uh, button or something. But I've been there before with it, and I go places all the time. But what are you saying? I'm saying I was felt like I was alone, and I said, oh, God, help me. Everything just all of a sudden start falling apart, and things were going against me, and I won't go into my personal uh, feelings at the time. But, but I was in a mess, and I started praying. I said, God, what is this? I can't get to that hospital. He told me she was going to be having this catheterization from 8.30 to 9. And they text me that early that morning before I left and I, I didn't get the text. And so I went on to the hospital and when I found out after I got down there that they're going to change the time till 11 o'clock. It went all haywire. Have you ever had one of those kind of days don't tell me you didn't. If you do, we get up here and pray. I'm making an altar call right now. Because we're going to have to pray. It was rough. But God was still with me. Shut up, my high. God was with me. I want to tell you, I don't care how hard your day is. Jesus is walking with you and you're clothed in white. You belong to him. And he will not leave you and forsake you. I got to the hospital, prayed for had to go on back to Pineville to another hospital. Went to a funeral today. It's been a hectic day, but I love every bit of it. You say, how come? I'm walking in white with Christ. I'm doing the will of God. I'm doing what God called me to do. I want to tell you something. I'm not made to serve God. Nobody's holding a gun at my head and say, you got to do this and that. I want to do it. I surrendered my will, my spirit, my soul, and my body has been surrendered to God. I want to walk with him in white. To walk with him in white represents something, something powerful to us, something that we must have. I'm talking about walking in white with Christ here tonight. Have you ever walked in white with him? Have you known him in the fullness of his power and his resurrection strength? I want to tell you, I know him tonight. I know who he is. I know what he can do. But walking in white with Christ means to walk in the adoption of his son. In Galatians chapter 3, 24 through 29, we're adopted into the family. It represents that. Galatians 3, 23 through 29, he said, or 24, excuse me, through 29, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith, but after that faith has come, we're no longer a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have put on, as many as of you have been baptized in the Christ, have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We're adopted and we have on white. We're his children. The world don't have that. They don't have that clothing in Galatians 4 and 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And because your sons, God has sent the, the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Ever Father, wherefore thou art no more servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ I see these little children come in here and they look cute. You know, some of them got a little bitty necktie on. And I told one little boy the other day, can I wear your necktie? I'd look like Yogi Bear. <laughs> little old bitty necktie, little bow ties. The parents are dressing them up. Those children can't dress themselves. Some of them are too little. They can't get a job. They can't dress themselves. 
God is, uh, you're dressing them up and bringing them to the house of God. God is dressing us up and he's bringing us to the house of God just like you dress your children. God has dressed you. He's put on you a robe of righteousness and one day you're going to have a crown of life that fate is not away reserved in heaven for you because you're walking in white with Christ. Romans 8 in verses 15 through 17 the scripture says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, cry Abba Father the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and have children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. We're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That means what Jesus is we are because we're walking in him in white. To walk in white doesn't only mean we're adopted and we're children. It means that we have joy. I'm supposing that prodigal didn't expect to receive from his father what he received when he went back to his father. He expected no doubt to receive a rebuke and to be uh, abused in that way. Uh, you know, he didn't know how his daddy was going to act, but he was willing to be a servant. But his father didn't act that way. I want to tell you, God doesn't act uh, toward us with wrong. He acts toward us with love and compassion and power where we can live it. Oh, it's hard in this generation. I know it is, but if you don't have the Lord, you'll never make it. We won't be ready for the rapture if we don't have Jesus, if we're not walking in white with him. I'm not by myself, brother. That son was dependent on that father. I want you to know tonight that I'm dependent on the Lord. He's my hope. He's my God. He's my strength he's going to take me through to victory Ecclesiastes 9 7 and 8 said go thy way eat the bread eat thy bread with joy and drink thy wine with a merry heart for God now accepteth thy works let thy garments be always white and let thy head lack no ointment the white garments here represents God's power and purity with the anointing. He said, let thy garments be always white and let thy head, head, excuse me, lack no ointment. You can't get anointed if you're not walking in white. That's the only way you're going to make it. To walk in white with Christ represents our allegiance to him, devotion to him. The Bible talks about the armies in heaven coming back in the book of Revelation. And I saw a white horse and, and he that sat upon him and is called faithful and true and in righteousness. He doth judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire and had on his head many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name was called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine Linen, white and clean. The armies followed him. He had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But they had on white, the white garments. The Bible tells us about being a, having allegiance to Christ. And they fought with Christ. These that are coming back, listen to me. We're going to be a part of the end program. God's not going to set us over a side somewhere. We're coming back with him on white horses and we're going to rule and reign with him. We're going to sit on thrones. We're going to have authority. We're going to have power because we're walking in white. God's going to take care of all rebels. God take care of all sin. He's going to take care of everything that's against his kingdom and we're going to be part of it. He said in 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace which is in Christ Jesus and the things that thou hast heard among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier we have an allegiance to Christ we have our garments God's given us a garment just like he does those that are in service you can tell who they are you can tell a man's a sailor he's in the navy because of what he wears you can tell him a man that's in the marines by what he wears you can tell a, a man that's in the army the coast guard by what they wear their garments every one of them wear 
wears the same garment. They get medals, they get decorated, but they wear the same garment. I want to tell you, there's only one garment that God's going to give us, and that's a garment of a robe that's washed in the blood of the Lamb, that's white as snow, that's the kind of garment we're going to get. We got to have an allegiance to Him. We're coming back. And we're all going to be clothed in white robes as we come back. To walk with Christ in white shows our righteousness. In Revelation 19 and verse 7, he said he heard the voice of a great multitude and the voice of many waters and the voice of mighty thunderings saying hallelujah unto God. Let us rejoice and be glad for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready and it was given unto her that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white and the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. This is a special thing to God. My bride, my, my bride, my wife got a picture of her on the uh, wall there in our bedroom. She's got on her wedding gown. She was beautiful. She still is. <laughs> Somebody told her that tonight. It's bragging on her. She's a good woman. She loves me and I love her. We're married. And when I married her, I meant to live with her till I die. How come? Because God said I'm supposed to. Now sometimes it don't work out. You got a companion unfaithful to you and they're out and they have infidelity about them and all things. God has special measures for things. But remember, I want you to remember this. If we, for, fail, for, for, we fail to remember it and we forget it, we don't have the same mentality as God. We've got to get the mind of God in dealing with people that have messed up their lives. Get the mind of God and try to help those that have gone astray. Bring them to Christ, get them anointed with God and let God straighten them out. Of course, they'll have to live by the Bible. They'll have to come God's way or they're not going to get any help. But oh, this bride here, my wife came down that aisle and we were in South Gastonia Church of God and uh, it was packed. That church held about 800. She had a lot of friends. I was from Michigan. They, many came from Michigan. She had a lot of friends. They bought me a nice suit. I don't know. I, I had some nice clothes, I guess, but they bought me a nice suit for the occasion. And it was all wonderful. I will never forget. It was over there at uh, Firestone, was it? At the, how, that place over there. Firestone Clubhouse. Don't laugh at me. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sometimes you scratch your head and I wonder if you really do. I'll never forget that cake. And there's a lot of other things you know about marriage and things. We love it because God made it. He helped us. And we've been together ever since and I intend to be with her till I die because I told God I would. And we've made a good couple. We've not been perfect and we've had some problems. <laughs> Have you ever had them? God's a problem solver. Not a shot at I. The devil will try to destroy a marriage if he can. But if we'll pray and stay together and do the will of God, our marriages will be strong. And God, and through Jesus, has taken a bride unto himself. And he's going to protect that bride. Amen. He grants to her that she could be clothed in white linen. This is the righteousness of the saints. We'll never reach the state of an experience with God unless we have righteousness now. We'll never see it then. We've got to be holy now. 
And you got to pray constantly to stay holy. God makes you holy. He cleanses you. He puts that white robe on you. But I want to tell you, if you're going to keep that robe, you're going to have to pray and fast and seek God and stand against the devil and go to the house of God and love your neighbors yourself and do the things you ought to do. And God will tell you what to do. And he'll give you the ability to do it because he's given you a white robe and he don't want you to lose it. Now, if that prodigal would have stayed there, he'd have had all the blessings, but he left. God's not going to leave you. You will be the one doing the leaving. When we walk with right in white, it ensures our citizenship. Revelation 7 and 9, I'm going to close in a few minutes. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people. And tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. They were going to sing the redeemed song. They were going to sing the praises of God because it come out of great tribulation and it washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. What a testimony. Philippians 3 and 20 said, For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body to be like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself, who shall change our vile body and make it like him. Oh, God. I can't preach it enough. It's going to be wonderful in the by and by. I have no reason to look down. have no reason to look back. My blessed days that are coming are by far more than what's been behind me. I've been blessed, but the greatest is yet to come. You're somebody. To walk with Christ in white means that we are his witnesses. Jesus was on Mount Transfiguration. The Bible said his, his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow so it's no fuller on earth can white them and Moses and Elias appeared on that mountain and Peter said it's good for us to be here let us make three tabernacles one for you and Moses and Elias and while he was talking a voice spoke out of heaven and said this is my uh, beloved son hear him I tell you, that's what we have to do. And, and there was a voice that spoke, and the disciples looked up, and there was nobody there except Jesus. Moses and Elias was gone. Listen to me. Moses and Elias are limited. They're human. They can't do what Jesus can do. And he'll be there when man will turn his back upon you. David said, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. He'll lift you high above the shadows. To obtain this privilege means more than anything. His whiteness is shared. Amos 3 and 3 said, can two walk together except they're agreed? It's shared. Everybody, as I said, are the same. God don't excuse you to go around living like the devil and make me live holy. I tell you, all of us have to live holy because we want to. I have no desire to turn back. He said in Revelation, Seven and four. These are they which come up out of great tribulation. Have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Let me read a couple of scriptures and then I'm going to close. Come to the instruments, please. I'm going to read in Zechariah. Chapter three. Oh, what we've got. What we've got is so wonderful. We just go along happy-go-lucky just like, you know, we're somebody. We, you know, we're, we're, the, we're so, so special. If we didn't have Jesus, we wouldn't be nothing but dirt. He breathed in the man the breath of life. He formed him. He made him. And he's still breathing. <laughs> Jesus didn't quit breathing. He breathed on you. The Bible said he met those disciples after his risen from the dead. and They were gathered together for fear of the Jews. And he stood under the, in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you as my Father has sent me. Even so send I you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You don't ever quit growing. I have a desire to be like him. 
I have a desire to preach better than I've ever preached in my lifetime. I love to preach. I fight demons sometimes when I preach. I, I'm up here fighting and there's spirits around trying to interrupt me and hinder me. But I'm going to preach because I love him and he called me to preach. His word needs to be preached from this pulpit. I can't understand churches that don't have preaching. Wednesday night service is a joke. We've got to come together on Wednesday night just like we're doing. We've got to have Sunday school. They don't have Sunday school anymore. It bothers me. We have a number of people don't come to Sunday school. And I'm not going to scold you. I'm not going to get up and chew you out. Sometimes I'm getting out. I have to leave class, go get something. I see people coming in for morning worship. They don't come to Sunday school. I don't know why. You get up an hour earlier, you can come to Sunday school. Our church ought to be packed. I shouldn't have to tell people to come to Sunday school. They ought to get up and say, we're going to Sunday school. It's not boring. God's word is not boring. We've got good teachers. We've got some teachers can teach better than some preachers can preach. I'm not getting mad at you in school. I'm just telling you. I told my wife the other day, I said, I can't understand why, why they, some of them just, they just won't come to Sunday. They're good people. I'm not knocking nobody. They just won't. Oh, I want to get all I can get. I'm afraid I might miss something. I love him. I want you to stand. I want you to pray about this with me, church. I want you to pray that God will begin to convict people that don't want to come to Sunday school. You know, it'd be pretty bad and I, help me right here God it'd be bad if, if God would get offended over that and you might miss out on some things I don't know why but you need to get all you can get I'm telling you I've, I gotta have it I gotta have it when I'm driving down the highway I gotta have Jesus on my mind I've gotta have him speaking to my spirit Show me the way standing against all this untoward generation. The prophets and the apostles, they had to fight every day of their life while they were on this earth. And you're going to have to fight. I want you to fall in these altars and I want you to search your heart. If you're not coming to Sunday school, don't be offended at me. Just start coming. You'll be blessed. You'll be glad you did. As I make that announcement on the television I say come attend the church of God in Dallas you'll be glad you did brother God's going to move in your house you shed tears over that God is going to help you. I'm praying for you and your loved ones. God bless my brother here tonight. Oh, God. Touch him right now in the name of Christ. Touch his companion, God. God, move on every man in this altar, every sister in this altar. Shalakalalamataya. God wants you to know that he sees every saying and he hears every word. And he is mindful of everything the devil tries to bring against you. And because you have resisted, you have become victorious. Because you've resisted, you've resisted the enemy. Shalalalalalamokonalalalalamamai. God touch her Lord you know that she's needing help she's needing help from many directions and you saved her and sanctified her and baptized her in the Holy Ghost you're going to show her your light you're going to direct her paths you're not going to leave her alone because she's robed in white. She's walking in white with Christ. Kanashananai. Rebuke that devil, that enemy, and give her peace and protect her. 
helper, your family. Shalanai, shalanamananai. Receive it. Receive it. Kalabo shalai. Silo kilalabo tananai. Thank you, Father. Thank you from a brother. Thank you from a brother, God. You brought him a long way. He's a good man. He's a good man. He's been a good person for years, but he's, he's, he's a person that is good in, in, in the Lord because you're working. Bless her, God. Bless her home, her family. She's had a great burden for her children. She loves her children dearly. Had a great burden. God, answer! Shalom kalakanda. Hilaboya salanaya. Shala kola mataya. Thank you from my brother God. Thank you from my sister God. Handalabo shalanai. Woo! Woo! Man, you've been faithful. You've been solid as a rock. Hallelujah. You've been solid as a rock. I don't know any two better people. My God, I don't know any two better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my brother God. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his commitment to you, God. Thank you for uh, his parents that have brought him up in the way of the Lord. He's got convictions. Touch his companion. Give him what he's asking for, God. Answer his prayers. Woo! Woo! Shako kalamanai. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. God will answer your prayers. How many has ever had your prayers answered? I said, God will answer your prayers. Woo! I feel God tonight. And I'm going to tell you what's going to get people today more than anything. It's the joy and the love and the power of God that will drown out sin. God can drown out sin. He can get that sin out of your children's hearts and just pull it out by the roots. He can do it. He can do it. Don't float around. Don't drift around. Put pressure on the devil. Come before my presence. Open up your spirit and your mind to me. Let your tongue be mine. Your hands be mine. Your feet be mine. Your eyes be mine. Your ears be mine. Open up to me. Come after me strongly. Because the perseverance of your commitment will determine the altitude of your victory. Seek me and you shall live. For I am the Lord. I said I am the Lord. Woo! And I will bring you through, say of God. Raise your hands and praise Him. Amen. Amen. Just stand up and shake somebody's hand near you. If you've got any visitors close to you, just shake their hand and say, We're so glad to see you tonight. My brother, you look good with that green shirt on. Amen. I love you, my brother. Praise God. Good to have you back. God bless you. Bless you for being here. Good to have you. Amen.